Good morning. Oh, here we go. Good morning. Good morning. We are here this morning. That's a brand new. That's a brand new story. Good morning. Good morning. We do not own the rights to this music. Good morning, Tuesday morning. He loves me. Yes. Good morning. Come on in this morning. Tag somebody this morning. Ah. Yes. And you ask me. Do I need him? Need the water. He loves me. He loves me. That's a brand new story. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Tell somebody. <laughs> We do not own the rights to this music. It's Pastor Ron Williams and the voices of Koinonia singing, He Loves Me. Yes. That's some good news this morning. Good morning, good morning. I see you, Vanessa. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Ella. I see you, Mary. Good morning, good morning, Tricia. Good morning, Cheryl. Hey, Preston, what's going on, my brother? Good morning. Good morning. Do I need him? Yeah, yeah. To, to get along. All right, Marilyn, I see you this morning. I see you, James. Hey, Delphine, I see you. Yeah. That's a brand new story. He loves me. That's a brand new. Hey, he loves me, little old me. Hey, good morning, good morning. Come on in this morning. Yes. I see you, Cynthia. Good morning. Good morning. I see you, Scotty. What's going on, my brother? Good morning. Good morning. Do I need him? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you ask me, do I need him? Yes. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in this morning. And you ask me. All right, all right, all right, all right. Ask me. <laughs> yes. Ask me. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I see you, Juanita. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Esther. I see you. Ask me. Ask me. Oh, praise God, praise God. It is good to be here again this morning on the wake up list. My God, once again, God has shown his mercy and has shown his grace and has breathed the breath of life into us for one more day. My God, ask me, do I need him? <laughs> Does the river need the water to get along? Well, praise God this morning. It is good to be here this morning once again. 
at the breakfast table. I just thank God for another opportunity to sit and share with you this morning. Uh, we talked yesterday about a few things concerning uh, our journey and our travel and what we've what we've been through and 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 the authentication of our journey being our wounds and our scars and those things. And I just thank God for for what he is showing us uh, because we we are, are we have we have become living testimonies of his goodness, of his mercy, of his grace, and we got the scars to prove it. We got the scars to prove it. I just thank God for our bishop and co-pastor this morning getting some rest. Uh, normally, my, my wife would be with me on uh, in this morning, but she's been busy with work and school, and she's tired, so she's getting some rest. So you got to put up with just little old me. Is that all right? Good morning, Nick. I see you. I see you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Jasmine, I see you this morning. Amen. So let's let's pick up where we where we left off yesterday. We talked about uh, quite a few things. We talked about the fact that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And when he was resurrected and he showed the disciples the piercing in his side and the wounds in his hands and uh, to authenticate what he he had been through you know uh bishop was preaching sunday and he was talking about uh he's talking about and 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 very very uh uh passion passionately and poignantly he he talked about the uh jesus and his and his journey uh down the road uh via della rosa you know, the street of blood, that's what Via Della Rosa and 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 carrying the cross and ultimately being crucified. And and, and you when you look when you look uh, at his journeys and the things that he went through with his healing and and touching people and even people betraying him and and leaving him and 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 the church folks, the scribes and the Pharisees questioning him about about who he was and what his purpose was and the rejection from his own friends and his and his own family. Here's what we need to understand about. We read situations where Jesus stopped along the way to to heal people. I mean, you know, he stopped at the, the 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 wedding in Canaan and he turned the water into wine and he he stopped and uh, uh, as a woman touched the hem of his garment that had an ailment for 12 years. He 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 talked to the demoniac in the in 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 the in the gatherings and and he talked to the legions and he healed him up and, and cast the, the demons out of this man who had these demons and, and the various things that he did. Listen, yeah. Jesus was on a journey. He was on a journey. And here's what we need to understand. His ultimate destination was Calvary. Oh, y'all didn't, didn't get that this morning. His ultimate, listen, we think that when he healed the woman with the issue of blood, that he was on his way to Jairus' house. And Jairus' house was on the path of where he was truly going because he was on his way to Calvary. He said, I came for this purpose, came I into the world when he was questioned by Pilate and said, who, who are you? Are you, are you a king? Are you, who are you? You know, and he talked about the power that he had over him. And Jesus said, you don't have no power over me. 
but his purpose, his destination was Calvary. To be the lamb without spot or blemish to make a sacrifice for the sins of the world. Now listen, on our journey, God has a set destination that we're going through. There's a lot of things that we stop and do along the way that have nothing to do with our journey. But as we go, they strengthen us for the task that God has laid before us. The thing that God gives you for a job well done is a bigger job to do. So a lot of times we think when, once we've completed something that our work is done, but no, our work is continuous until we go home. And so on the way, on the way to our promised land, whatever you envision your promised land to be, on the way to our promised land, we're going to encounter some disease. We're going to encounter some pestilence. We're going to encounter some hard times. We're going to encounter some sleepless nights. We're going to encounter some tears. We're going to encounter some fears. We're going to encounter various things on our wilderness journey. <laughs> but listen, don't be discouraged. Some of us have been miles down the road and we're still experiencing some of the, some of the uh, obstacles that are set in our way for our journey. But don't be discouraged because God is going to bring us to a desired end. My God, my God. And so we were in a Deuteronomy chapter eight, and let's just kind of recap on what we talked about yesterday. Amen. And so we talked about doing all the commandments to observe them that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that God promised unto your fathers and that, that thou shall remember all the way which thy Lord God led thee these four years in the wilderness for what? To humble thee. See, a lot of us needed some humility in our life. You know, a lot of us needed to, 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 to stop and reflect on where we have come from. You know, uh, <laughs> I was telling my wife yesterday because we was talking about the, the the Oscars thing, you know, so we, we, we're not going to get in detail about that. But and so um, I told her, I said, that's 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 why, you know, you you, you can't you you give us a nickel over bus fare and, 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 and we don't know how to act. You understand? Because once we get a few things that we can say that we accomplished or that we did or that gives us some notoriety, then we, we tend to forget where we came from. The journey that we took, and not only the journey that we took, the help and the assistance from those that God put in our way to get us to the place where, where we are today. And so, and so we, uh, uh, he, he talks about in Deuteronomy, the 40 years in the wilderness was to humble you and to prove, to know what is in your heart, what is truly in your heart. And so oftentimes we think that, that a person feels a certain type of way, but here, here's the thing, you know, we have all kinds of things that's going on in the world and, and we see, uh, and we say, well, how, how could, how could they do such a thing? You know, you got the road rage is one thing that comes to mind, you know, when people just get, and so, and then, and, and then you don't know based upon how a person looks, what they've been through or what they are going through. And sometimes we approach people haphazardly and then as a result, what's really in their heart, it might just be for the moment, but it's in their heart. And it might be some hurt and it might be some things that they're dealing with. And so you become the recipient 
of the rage that is going on in their heart. And God wanted to pull out all of those things that were in the heart of his people. And he used this wilderness journey. And he said, he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, allow hunger in your life. You know, uh, and I mentioned this yesterday. See, I, re I remember some of the, the hungry times when, when I was hungry physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And, and it was during those hunger times that my focus was not so much on the extravagance as much as it was the nourishment that I needed for the moment. Give me this day my daily bread. And so sometimes we get so clouded and our mind is so crowded with expectations of what we want or what we think we need and we're, we're, we're past the hunger state. And so now we feel like we have choices and we, and we reprioritize things based upon our stuff and based upon what we have. And sometimes we forget what it was like when we was hungry. Remember when you was hungry? You was hungry for, for and it's not necessarily just food. You were, you were hungry to, to get that degree and you stayed up late and you studied and, and, and now you've gotten that degree, but you forgot when you were hungry. Remember when you were, were hungry and, and you didn't have any money and you worked like minimum wage jobs or menial jobs just to get by until you could do something better. But now, huh, who, me? I'm not going to do nothing like that. And so God allowed this hunger so to put them back in perspective as to what their priorities really were. And when God fed them, they looked at the manna and they said, what is it? What is it? And that's what manna means. It means, what is it? Be and then they started complaining about the provisions of God. <laughs> Start complaining about the provisions of God. My grandfather used to tell me, you know, because when I would make my little complaints about this and come and crown his shoulder about this and that, my grandfather, he was like, he was the, the rock of our family. And even us as grandchildren, he made sure that we didn't need or want. Now, we weren't rich by no means. And he was a hardworking man, but he had prioritized things and he had raised his children and taken care of those things. And so he he was he was now uh, like that with his grandchildren. And he made sure that 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 we was OK. And uh, when I would come with my little my little teenagers complaints you know ain't nothing right for a teenager you know we he used to tell me he said man he said you the only person i know that cry hungry with a whole loaf of bread under your arm he said you've got what you need and even some more but you're not satisfied you want the things that you don't have. And most of the time it's really because, not because you think you need it, it's because you probably just saw somebody else with it. And so we've lost the hunger. He said, which thou knewest, he said, I fed thee manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but the, by, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, you know? And so sometimes we forget that and the significance of that because once we once we get a nickel over bus fare, you know, and, and we feel like we're all right, you know, I'm straight, you know, I, I can pay my bills, I can do this. We forget about the journey and we forget about where we came from, where God has brought us to. You know, our, our past has some relevance for our presence, for our present. 
our past has some relevance for our present. Because if we if we had not gone through some of the things that we we have gone through, uh, we may not have been in the place where we are today. You know, and um, so I, I I know I know the 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 struggles and the journey and the mess and the tragedy and the and and you know a lot of, in in my life I'm not I'm not talking about you I don't know about what's going on with you I know y'all been saved sanctified filled with the Holy Spirit your whole life you you were shouting in baby shoes and so so uh, I'm I'm not talking about you but I'm talking about me and I and I know in my life most of the problems or the difficult times that I went through were self-imposed because I was going in a direction that was away from God as opposed to going to God. And God allowed those things to happen in order to redirect me to the place where he would have me to be. Amen. And so now, now these, the wounds and the scars that I have from that journey have become a testimony that I can utilize to redirect or help redirect someone who's in the same situation. You know, the, 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 the biggest trick of the, of the enemy is to keep you from telling somebody what you've been through. The big, one of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to, is to, Keep you quiet. You're safe now. You don't have to tell nobody. You're all right now. You're good. You ain't got to broadcast that. What people going to think about you if they know that you did that? What people going to think about you if they know that you was in that? What people going to think about you? But we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony, of our testimony, of our testimony. We're doing uh, the stop the violence in Jitteret and, 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 and it's going to take, it's going to take some people, you know, uh, during the, during the time when they have speakers, it's going to take some people coming, getting up and being transparent with these young people so that they can understand. Because here's what the enemy does. He isolates you and makes you think when you're in a situation, don't tell nobody what you're going through or don't trust because they ain't going to understand. Nobody knows where you are right now. So it's, it's just you. But then you'll find once you break through that wall, that there's a multitude of people who have been right where you are and have made it through, have made it through, have come out of some, some, some situations that when they were in, they didn't think they were gonna make it out. I've, I've, I've been in that, I've been in that place where, where I've been in situations where I didn't, I didn't know if there was an exit. And sometimes I, I just conceded to the fact that this was where I was going, going to be. And each time God would speak to me in some form or fashion, and just like he did when Elijah, when Elijah was running from Jezebel and, and was hiding in the cave and, 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 and God spoke to him and said, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Come on, somebody, y'all talk to me this morning. What are you? And so you find yourself sometimes in situations where you know you're not supposed to be. And if we linger long enough, God will speak to us because he's already invested in us some things and say, what are you doing here? And the here doesn't have to be a specific geographical location, but here could be even a state of mind. What are you doing here? Why is your mindset 
such that you're unforgiving? Why is your mindset such that you're unloving? Why is your mindset such that it's just all about you? What are you doing here? I'm going to let that just sink in for a minute. And so we, we look through and sift through the wreckage of our past. And we try to find something that we can salvage. But here's what we fail to understand. The salvageable part of the wreckage of our past is the experiential knowledge that we have of going through. Yea, though I walk through. Yea, though I walk through. I made it through another day's journey. I made it through another day's journey. So in verse 4, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 4, we're going to pick up and 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 what did what he's talking about, he's further uh talking about the provisions that he made for his people in the wilderness journey. And in verse 4 he says, Thy raiment wax not old upon thee. Now listen, for 40 years. They wandered in the wilderness and nobody's clothes got old or wore off, moth-eaten or shredded or nothing, nothing. Their clothes looked just as good at the end of the journey as they did in the beginning. Y'all here this morning. Listen. You don't look like what you've been through. You don't look like through the wilderness journey, somehow, even with the scars and the wounds, you don't look like what you've been through. Through the wilderness journey, somehow on this side, of the valley of the shadow of death, you seem to look even better <clears throat> than when you started, or not the worst for wear. You don't look like what you've been through. And so he said, your raiment, the raiment never grew old upon thee, neither did thy feet foot swell these 40 years. Listen. You think about walking through wilderness for 40 years and, you know, your, your feet ought to be slow. He said, but, but, but physically, there, there was nothing wrong with you that you couldn't function at the end. I kept you. I kept you through the wilderness journey, through your murmuring and complaining through uh, your questioning my authority, through your rebellious activity, through your lying, your cheating, and your stealing, through your gossiping and your backbiting, through, through I kept you, and you don't look like. You don't look like what you've been through. My God, my God. He said in verse five, he said, thou shall also consider in thy heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chastened thee. <clears throat> you know, one of, uh, one of the conversations that I often have uh, with a cousin of mine and uh, they uh, 
they often we often talk about you know the goodness of God and the concept that you know that God is love and and listen I'm 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 not disputing that I'm not disputing that at all and and so they attribute nothing hurtful or nothing that causes uh, an obstacle in your life to God because their concept is that God is love and a loving God wouldn't do that or wouldn't allow that in your life. So they believe that anytime that there's a tragedy or a struggle or something in your life is from the devil and, and because God God is love and God wouldn't do anything like that. And listen, let me let me let me tell you something. See, I'm 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 a I'm a 50s baby. I was born, I was born in the 50s, and I was born way before all this here stuff where where you know you 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 couldn't touch your kids and time out and that type of stuff that and 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 and, and I got some 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 hella whoopings. I got some I got some thrashings. And uh, uh, I think me and Brother Gene was talking about this in Sunday school. And we were talking about, you know, uh, how as children, the cruelty of it, because you had to go get the weapon that they was going to beat you with. <laughs> go get me a switch. <laughs> go get go get me a switch. And you better bring a good one, too. <laughs> Listen, go get me the gun that I'm going to shoot you with. And you better not bring me no blanks. You better put some, some. <laughs> listen, and so, and so, but listen, I, 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 we were talking about that, that generation of children that grew up with the discipline, the loving discipline, someone that loved them enough to discipline them in the, in the way of, of, of putting some pain on you for a minute to get your perspective back. Grew up with a whole different perspective and, and not only perspective, but respect for the elderly and those around them. You know, I, I told him, I, I told him, I told him, I, told him, I said, uh, 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 I heard somebody say that, that, that the timeout kids, you know, grew up to be the Columbine kids that go into school and, 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 and kill everybody. But listen, my point is, he says, I chasten thee. He said, as a man chasing his son, so the Lord thy God chasing thee. See, I know that God is love, but something I tell my cousin all the time, you need to read the book of Job. God allowed the enemy to do some things to Job. Other than that, it wouldn't have happened to Job. Why? Because he knew the character of the man. And oftentimes our wilderness journey, not oftentimes, all the times our wilderness journey brings forth our ca the character of the person that we are that we didn't even know. Some of the some of the morals, some of the standards that you have set for yourself today come from your wilderness journey. See, there's some people out there that have been through some things and they said, listen, God, if you get me out of this, <laughs> I will never. Now, I, I, I wasn't one of them. I mean, I said that, but after he got me out, I went back and, 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 and did you go back, Jack, do it again. I went back and did, but there are some of you who said that and meant it. Because that was one thing that God allowed to, to, to bring some, build some character in you to establish you for a day such as today. So he says, therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him, to develop a healthy, honest respect 
and all for who God, who God is. Now listen, walk with me over here to Psalms 107. We're going to look at some things. We touched on this yesterday. And I just want to look at, at some things in this portion of scripture. Psalms 107, the 107th division of Psalms. Y'all there? Amen. Mm, sometimes you have to remind kids respect has to be as loud as the disrespect. <laughs> all right, all right, I see that. Mm -hmm. My God, 107 Psalms. Y'all, y'all get there. Y'all get there. I'm trying to, you know, my eyes bad. I'm trying to read some of your comments. Ah, amen. Nobody tell my story like I can do. Don't let the looks fool you. <laughs> I just look like this. <laughs> okay, listen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For he is good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, give thanks. I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. That's the part. I don't want to skip that. His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Now, we, we, we have a good God and his mercy endureth forever. We have a good God we have a merciful God and we have a gracious God. And listen, we, 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 we ought to be grateful day by day because of his mercy and his grace, you know, because we read a lot of Old Testament stories when he was a God of justice. He said, I, I said, don't do that. And if you do this, you're going to die. And if you did it, you died. Bam. End of story. But now we're in the dispensation of grace. And sometimes we think that God has to do for us what he does for us. And he doesn't have to do for us what he does for us. He doesn't have to extend his mercy. He doesn't have to extend his grace. But sometimes we get so comfortable that we think that we can just live and do how we want to do because God is so good that he has to do, uh, 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 extend his mercy and his grace. That's, that's not the case. But because of who he is, because he is good, his mercy endures forever. And the scripture says his mercies are new every morning. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, I wanted to get back to that because we were talking about earlier about overcoming by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Listen, the reason why people are going to know that God is good and that his mercy endures forever is that we who have been through the wilderness journey have been redeemed, have been washed and, and, and now we have our rejoicing in our triumph. We are the redeemed and we need to say we need to say so. Who, who else is going to proclaim the goodness of God? And listen, I'm not just talking on, on Sunday morning and at Bible study. It's easy to talk about God when you're in a place where God is the subject. But I'm talking about everywhere that you go, you need to say so that God is the reason why you're here today. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now watch this. 
whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. A show of hands of everybody that's been redeemed from the hands of the enemy. <laughs> A show of hands. Whom he has redeemed. From, listen, I know that I was in the clutches. The clutches of the enemy. I know that he had me uh, 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 almost bagged and tagged. And so as opportunity avails itself, I tell someone about, listen, because people, people would say this, you know, all the time, man, you know, I told you about my friend that, that, that I ran to at the Bible study and he said he thought, I was dead. And so I get comments like that all the time because people think that they know me from from the little history that they know about me. And uh, but 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 they they didn't stay around for for the rest of the story and, and see the redemption process and see that the person who you thought you knew is not the person who you see today. I understand what you're saying, because even me myself didn't think that I was going to make it. But God in his mercy and in his grace. And he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Now watch this now. They wandered in the wilderness aimlessly. See, some of our wilderness journeys, we didn't even know where we were going. We was just out there. We was just going with the flow. We was just out there. Whatever was the hot item or the hot ticket at that particular time, we just went. We just rolled with it. And our concern was more of, of what people thought about us than what God thought about us. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. They, 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 their wandering was aimless. They had no place where they could really call home. Now, now that's, that's significant. No settling place. Where you know we we got we got some folks we got some folks who are who are like that now, even in 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 the church you know because they 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 still on a wilderness wander because they jump from church to church to church to church because they have not settled or found a place that they can call home. But listen, our wilderness journey will take us. Where we, we, where we feel like there's no place that we really belong. Oh, my God. A wilderness journey will put us in such a state that, 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 that we feel that there's no place that we really belong. And listen, and listen, man. The teenage, I often say I would never want to be a teenager today, but teenage years are difficult all by themselves. But teenage years with so much social influence that 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 just comes into your house. You know, it, 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 there was a time when you could just you could kind of guard what came into your house. You know, you had three channels on the television set, you know, and you might have had a, 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 a radio and then, you know, you had and, and so but. But now with social media, there is so much stuff that just enters into your house uninvited. You didn't invite it. You didn't meet it at the door. You didn't say come in and have a seat. But it is talking to your children and influencing your children. And so the influence in their wilderness journey is puzzling them as to where they really belong or who they really are. We have all type of things that are shaping the minds and the character of our children. That's why we need to tell them the reality of where we've been and who we are and how we got to where 
we are today. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry, remember hungry? Thirsty, remember thirsty? Their souls fainted in them. Then, see, here, here's the situation. It's almost always not until trouble comes that we truly <clears throat> cry out to God. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they may go to a city of habitation that you may belong somewhere. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied, verse 9, the longing soul and Feeleth the hungry soul with goodness. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Listen, most of our affliction, most of our bondage situation, most of the trials and tribulations that we went through is because of our own rebellious attitude. Listen, they are where we were. He said, therefore, he, God, brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Listen, I have done, I have done some stuff in the streets and I've done some stuff by myself and I've done some stuff with other people involved. And the problem was when I did stuff with other people involved, uh, when I when I got caught, I never heard from those other people involved again. I I was in I was by myself in the consequences. Look what he said. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor, and they fell down, and there was none to help. I depended on those people that were around me when we were doing our shenanigans. But then when the when the rubber met the road, there wasn't nobody there. There wasn't nobody there. He said, then, then find yourself in an isolated position. This is where this is where some of our young people are today. They feel like they're all by themselves and there's no one to help. There's no one to help. But listen, he said, then. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them. First, he delivered them. Now, he saved them out of their distresses and brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say, for he had broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Watch this, verse 17. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. 
fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. See, see, our wounds and our scars from our journey are self-imposed. They, they are because of our own transgressions and our own iniquities that we became afflicted. Even some, listen, even some of the things that we might be experiencing in our body and emotionally today is, is we can we can track back to our rebellious attitudes and, 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 and our sins and our iniquities because there's a consequence for sin. We might not have to pay the ultimate price because Jesus did it all on the cross and he said it is finished. So he paid, he satisfied the wage for sin. The wages of sin is death, but there's some consequences. There's still some guilt and some scars, some things that, that we have as a result of what we've been through. But even in that, God utilizes that to bless somebody else who is going through the same situation. Their soul abhorred all manner of meat and they drew draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. He sent his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The word became flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld as it was the, 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 the manifestation, <laughs> the light of the son of God who loved him and gave us, listen, his word. David said this, through all of his valley experiences, he said this, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Listen, the word has, has saved us and because of the value of who God is in his word, it has pulled us out of a lot of tough situations because God has desired to do something better for us than we're doing for ourselves. And so now we have the word in us. And it's that word that motivates on us, us on a day to day basis, even just to get up in the morning and sit here at the breakfast table and have a conversation. That word, that word that so permeates our being, that word that pulled us out of our distresses, that word that we now look to and understand why we had to go through what we go through. It is that same word that is going to minister to those that are in the situation today. But listen, listen, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about, and see, this is this is this is what's happening. I'm not talking about that we have to be in a situation to to to, to formally preach to people who are in a situation, but we've got to meet them where they are. And the word of our testimony is part of the word that God is going to use to deliver some people. It is the word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. He sent his word. He gave you a word just as he sent his word and pulled them out of their distresses. He gave you have a word. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For he is good and his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Listen, it, it is time for us to wrap up my God, my God, I, I, I hope that we we have we have tread some ground this morning. I, I see the I see the response to stop you. I must have just stopped talking and just started listening. Huh? <laughs> OK, no, it just wasn't scrolling. All right. But listen, but listen, 
May God bless you. May God keep you. May his Holy Spirit forever shine upon you. But listen, listen, look at your wounds. Look at your scars. Reflect on where you've been through to get to where you are. And the word of your testimony, the, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Some people don't know. They hear preaching and they hear all of those things come from the pulpit. And they, the, the mentality, the same mentality that I had when, when I was a young boy, or a teenager in church trying to understand. That, and I looked at the preacher, I said, well, you know, he don't know nothing. He ain't never been through nothing. You know, because they all, you know, they all, you know, they just never, nobody gets up and, and, and te- they used to have testimony service in church, you know, uh, uh, during devotion time in, in the old Baptist church and people would get up and they would, they would give a testimony about the goodness of God and did as the years passed that began to dwindle and, 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 and the testimonies started to turn into testimonies and, and so it, 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 you know, but there was there was a significance for that, you know, because when I would hear some of some of the older people get up and talk about what they were doing and what God pulled them out of, I would say, "Wow, wow!" And 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 I was more in tune to the testimony service than I was to the preacher because my perspective of the preacher was that he's always been a preacher. He ain't never been through nothing, you know, so, and, and, and that's what a lot of people think today. So listen, I thank God for you this morning. We're going to get ready to pray and we're going to get ready, get ready to get out of here. Uh, um, I'm done, but I'm not quite finished, but may God bless you. May God keep you. May his Holy Spirit forever shine upon you. And, 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 and just remember as you go through the day, that God has brought you through for purpose, purpose, purpose. You're designed for purpose. There's somebody in your circle that needs to hear your story because they in that situation right now that you were in and to, that you got out. And when they and listen, it's going to have such an impact because when they hear, they're going to look at you as if there's no way that you have been through this. And look like you do. And are clothed and in your right mind today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify you this day, dear Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every person that is tuned in this morning, dear Lord, their wilderness journey imposed upon their heart the character that you brought out because of their journey. Father, everyone that is in listening a distance of my voice, dear Lord, for <coughs> that you would minister to their hearts and to their lives and to their various situations. Every name on the prayer list, dear Lord, every person that is maybe going through some sickness and or, or financial situations, or or there are some who have children that are uh, incarcerated. There are some, dear Lord, that are are dealing with. With, with with sicknesses in their body and their Lord and there's some that are dealing with relationship issues, oh God, and there's just various things going on within the body of Christ. And Father, we know that you are concerned. Lord, we pray, dear Lord, that you minister as only you can, Father, as you've always done in our wilderness experience. There's some people right now, God, who are still deep in their wilderness experience. And Father, don't know how to get out. Move upon their heart today. Father, I pray today, God, that you would just move as mightily as only you can, that your your deliverance, your salvation, your restoration would flow, God, as we speak, so that these times that we gather together uh, for the breakfast table, dear Lord, these times are not an exercise in futility, but they will perform what you desire to do. Father, I thank you. I thank you once again for the opportunity, dear Lord, to sit and break the bread of life here at the breakfast table. Now, God, we call upon you that you would take all that we do, all that we say, and minister as only you can. Dear Lord, stir up the gift that is in us, 
oh God, that we will begin to proclaim, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for our deliverance. We thank you for our journey. We thank you for our wilderness. Father, and we thank you, dear Lord, for purpose that you've given us and you've shown us that we are going to be able to utilize to help someone who is still in their wilderness journey. Father, we bless you. We lift you up and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God keep you. May his Holy Spirit forever shine upon you is my prayer. Y'all have a blessed day today. Amen.